bass tone's really not working for me. Got it, okay, no problem. It's a hit. What if you could flip a switch to magically get the perfect bass tone for any song? Well, check this out. I call it my producer switch, and that way if I'm doing a session and I'm playing and the producer doesn't like the tone, he asks me to get a different sound, I make sure he sees me flip this switch and then I just change my hand position a little bit and they love it. I mean, but there's no wires or anything that go to this switch. It's a placebo. Did you catch that? I can't believe that's real. That's like the most badass move ever. Where you place your plucking hand has just as much power as buying new gear or turning knobs. So in this video, I'll show you how to use the producer switch so you can stop gassing and confidently get the right tone for the music. Check this out. There's a huge difference in tone as I move my hand, right? And that's the power of the producer switch. By moving between the fingerboard position, the neck position, and the bridge position, you can morph your tone to fit any song. But what makes these positions sound so different? You can actually see the difference in tone by looking at the frequency spectrum when I pluck this open A string. And if you're not used to reading one of these, just imagine you're seeing the bass, mid, and treble ranges like you would tweak on your amp knobs. So you can see, as I move towards the bridge, I get more mids and the bass frequencies drop a bit. And then as I go back, the mids drop and the bass bumps up. So those changes might not look that crazy, but they'll sound and feel really different in a band context, which is why you need to figure out which one to use when. So how do you actually learn to use these at the right time? You'll practice in musical context with me in a minute, but here's a simple way to get started. One of these three positions is much more common than the other two, and it's where you should spend most of your time in most styles of music. That position is the neck position. This has been the standard since the birth of the Fender Precision Bass, which strongly encouraged you to play there since it was really the only good place to rest your hand. But it also makes sense musically. You get a good balance of the bassiness of the fingerboard position and the mid-range definition of the bridge position. Most of the time when you look at a bassist, this is where they're plucking. That is when they're not busy clicking like and subscribing to Bass Buzz so they don't miss the next video. So when is it time to move to one of your outside positions? There are a lot of ways to decide and it's not always a matter of right and wrong. Eventually you'll just feel it out, which you'll practice in a minute. But first let me give you a cheat sheet to get you started. So why would you move to the fingerboard if you want to be more felt than heard? The fingerboard sounds warm, bassy, and round, and also kind of loose and undefined. So it's good for hiding back in the mix, it's bad for standing out. Here's Lee Sklar sneaking in some fingerboard plucks at the end of a song. He goes for some upper register fills, but the fingerboard position helps keep those notes smooth and in the mix without getting too distracting. The bridge position kind of gives you the opposite. It's a way to stand out and get noticed. It's clear, defined, punchy, and bright. It's also relatively thin and quacky, so it's not always a good support sound. You can catch Jaco Pastorius playing in this position a lot, and here's a moment in a solo where he quickly goes from fingerboard to neck to bridge. Just listen to how the tone shifts. <laughs> You need to try this in band context to feel how these changes affect the sound in the room and the overall mix. Moving your hand alone in your bedroom won't really cut it. You're best off in a live room with amps and drums, but we'll get you started here. And please listen through headphones or real speakers so you can actually hear these tone differences. First up, we've got a reggae track, which sounds like this. Let's see what our producer is looking for bass-wise. Just give me some classic reggae bass. Nice and subby, not too defined. Just sit back in the mix, fill out the bottom. So if you had to guess, just using our cheat sheet, which hand position would work best? Bassy, sit in the background. Sounds like fingerboard position, right? But let's test it out using our ear in case you don't have a producer handy. So here's a sample bass line just as a reference. We'll start at the neck, since that's our default starting position. Sounds okay, right? Maybe it's a little bit too bright, but it could work depending on the rest of your signal chain. If you had some dead strings or you rolled off the treble on your amp, that could round out the tone. But let's try the bridge position now. Yuck. <laughs> That's way too punchy. And now we don't have enough bottom end for this style, right? So finally, let's go to the fingerboard. And you feel that bottom end fill out. So this is the safest, safest spot for that smooth reggae sound. It's 
especially if you have fresh strings on, like I do on this bass. If you want to get the most out of this lesson, try this more on your own with the play along tracks. I've got free SoundCloud links for you in the description. And also if you're having trouble with any of these sample bass lines, I wrote these at a level where you'd 100% be able to nail them if you'd taken my Beginner to Badass course. Real quick, before we do our next track, you might be asking yourself at this point, well, what if I don't have a producer alter ego to tell me exactly what bass tone fits the style? You do need a reference point in the style to know how the bass should sound. So besides just listening to a genre and how the bass feels in it, it also helps to look up isolated bass tracks in that style on YouTube so you can hear how the bass sounds on its own. All right, track two of three is a disco jam. What do you need, producer Josh? It's disco. We want that bass popping. We want to hear those sexy octaves. Give it to me, baby. So again, if you were guessing using the cheat sheet, which hand position would you go for? Pop out, get noticed. Sounds like bridge position, right? But again, let's test it with our ear. So here's our sample bass line. Again, we'll start at our default position in the neck. So it sounds okay, it's not bad, right? But let's try our extremes. Here's the fingerboard. Can't really hear it that well now, right? Especially those high notes. We really want the bass to cut through more. So let's try the bridge. Huh, pops right out. Punchy, articulate, and disco-tastic. Last up, we've got a rock track. What kind of bass should we lay down? I want you to cut through those guitars, but keep that low end. Don't stand out so much that I have to fire you. All right, so <laughs> what does that sound like? We want some good bottom end, some definition. Sounds like we kind of want to be middle of the road with the neck position. So let's check that with our ears. So here's our sample bass line. Normally we'd start at the neck as a default, but let's start on an extreme so we can hear why the neck makes the most sense. So here's the fingerboard position to start. Got good bass, right? But it's also really hard to hear through those guitars. Here's the bridge. So now it kind of pops out too much and we're also losing some of that bottom end. Now we'll go to the neck. And that's kind of the sweet spot. It's still bassy and thick, but it cuts through. So you'll have to remind yourself to pay attention to plucking position if you're new to thinking about it. And you could actually pluck in a ton of different places. But just thinking about these three basic ones will help tune your ear so you can actually hear the difference and start using these to express yourself. I think we've got another hit on our hands. 